need to know your present heading. The heading is 350. Hello YouTube, welcome back. I'm back, you're back, and we're still friends, so everything is good, right? It's been far too long, but the move to the new house is complete, and I'm all set up at 100% functionality again. Yay! <laughs> anyway, several of my viewers on Twitch have asked me about my camera settings like you're seeing here, and I'm here to deliver. The primary tool that I use right now uh, for my camera movements is EasyDock, also known as EZCA. Uh, this offers SimPilots a great advantage and a step up from the default camera module in FSX. Its wide range of applicability makes this the perfect utility for video makers, casual simmers, streamers, etc, etc. Now the first step you'll want to complete for the installation process after of course running the installer is to run the EasyDock configuration file. Uh, if your installation worked properly, you will have a little blue icon here with the uh, EasyDock shortcut. You just want to double click on that and it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is press configure FSX and you can kind of get this matrixy type thing and it will add a camera file to all of your aircraft that are installed. Uh, you'll want to rerun this every time you install a new aircraft if you wish to use EasyDock with that particular add-on. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it passes everything is good to go and we'll just set up FSX here and we'll go flying. Now that we have finished the installation process for EasyDock, we want to just finish a couple things up here and unbind some of the default keys for the viewing system in FSX. I have open here the settings control window and I have the event category set to views. That way we're just getting all the camera settings. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of anything that's associated to uh, moving around that we might need. Uh, some of these keys include the S key and the A key as well as all of your uh, directional keys, the left, right, down and up, as well as your insert and delete keys. Those are used for moving up and down. Obviously those are default key mappings and there are ways to select other mappings if you so choose. Just make sure, however you set it up, that you don't have anything that is going to kind of get in the way and uh, kind of conflict with your original default camera module in FSX. I'm sitting here on the ground at Santa Monica Airport in California with the default 172 loaded here. And we're going to just take a look here at some of the kind of interface features of EasyDock as well as set up a couple shortcuts and cameras so that you guys can kind of get an idea of how this works. You will obviously want to set up each aircraft specifically so that you have the best flight simulation experience possible. So to enable EasyDock, you have two options. You can either press the three key on your numpad or you can head up to your add-ons menu and select EasyDock camera add-on and global enable as well as global disable. To access your main interface for EasyDock, you're going to want to go back to that same menu and select show studio. And we'll just open that up here. And you can see it's fairly simple. I have cleared out all of the previous cameras that came with the EasyDock. You can do the same and follow along or just kind of play around with what is already there. But I'm going to take you guys through a full setup of some of the camera features within EasyDock. You can see here that it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the virtual cockpit, aircraft, and world cameras. Everything is pretty easy. And this is where all of your cameras will be displayed once they've been configured. And to jump between one or the other, you just click on the title and you go. Some of the most important controls that you'll want to see here is this top row. You have the view controls and the effects. Now, on the top bar here, you have the view controls. Uh, we'll start here with PTP that is point to point and what that will do is it will take you from obviously one point to the next point in this case with your cameras and it kind of offers a bit more of a kind of a fly to effect rather than a, just a snapshot to the next one. The 360 button will allow you to rotate your camera a full 360 degrees. I'll give a quick example of that here. You can go all the way around here uh, with that uh, disabled, you can only get about 180 degrees of rotation. So more preferences there for you. With the POV switch, you can go left and right without moving your actual eye point. You can see here I'm still focusing straight out the front of the aircraft, but I can move around 
and go all crazy and whatnot. And the speeds for which you do that can be adjusted uh, on your control panel, which we'll get to a bit later in this tutorial. The ML key is your mouse look, and that enables you to look around with your mouse. Now, this is kind of inconvenient because it's gonna constantly move with your mouse. So I typically leave this off, but the way around that is you just click on your middle mouse button and you just click and drag and then you release it and it'll stop the movement. So that's kind of how I pan around. And then the zoom key, you can use that to zoom in with your middle wheel on your mouse. For the effects, we have R&D, which is random head, or uh, random movements, uh, dynamic head movements, and then CR. I'll get into these a bit later as we're setting up the cameras. Okay, you guys, so here we are in the cockpit of the Flight 1 Citation Mustang. I thought I would do a quick change of pace here to show you guys some of the camera features on board uh, the Easy Dock software. So you can see here, all of my panels, except for the world column, obviously have been filled out with various different cameras and whatnot and I can kind of fly from one point to the other and you can see each one has its own settings for the effects and EasyDoc will remember all of these settings as well. I also have some of these for the outside of the aircraft. If I just click around, I have a whole bunch really that you can just kind of look through and make your own. Now, if I wanted to make my own new view, for example, let's say I have here this new copy of my main view, okay? I'm gonna press the num2 key and you're gonna hear this beeping sound. Now with this beeping sound, what we wanna do is we wanna just kind of move around with our mouse keys and figure out what is a good look for us here. So let's put it right, maybe right here. We'll just leave it right here. And to save that camera, we'll just click that num2 key again. So now the beeping's gone and our camera has been saved. And you can see here, if we wanna rename it, we'll just type in, uh, we'll call it MFD from right. And we'll just enter and now it's saved. So if I go back to the main view and then fly to the MFD from right, you can see it has a very nice, easy transition. And we can use the PTP, the 360 and the POV. I'm gonna leave off the mouse look and zoom for obvious reasons. So that's kind of how you set up a camera. Same thing goes for the external cameras. Now let's take a look at uh, how to set a uh, shortcut if we ever would want to use that. Now for my simulator here, I like to use different shortcuts on my joystick. And you can see up here on the uh, shortcut panel that we can put in a keyboard or a joystick uh, shortcut. So I'm gonna put in a joystick shortcut and I'm just gonna press a single button on my joystick here. So I'll press the 12 key, I believe and I have this set for another camera, so I'll just overwrite it and select OK. Now, if I go on my joystick and I press the F12 key, or the 12 key rather, it'll fly me to that point so I can use my other ones. And I have about six different buttons that I use for my uh, shortcuts with my uh, different views in the VC. Same thing goes for the exterior. You can set up a camera in the same manner uh, just kind of pick and choose how you want to do it and set them up for your own preference. If you'd like to have different effects, you can put on the random uh, movements and you can see I'm kind of shaking around a little bit. And you can also put on the CR uh, movement whenever you touch down and stuff like that. The last thing I wanted to show you guys for today's video is on the options here. Uh, you can set your general settings like this here. Um, and there's these different presets for how fast you move around. Now you'll notice here, if I do something like 3D game, it's very, it moves, the aircraft itself moves around very jolt-like. You can see here with the aircraft mode, it moves around very fast and there's not a lot of fluidity. Uh, cinema is what I typically use. It's a good mixture between the two. It's, it's fast, but it's also very fluid. Uh, you have walk, which is the fast one with practically no fluidity whatsoever. And then the float, which is really a slow, very slow um, type of movement. I'm actually moving right now, but you can barely see it just because I'm uh, on the outside of the aircraft. If I go on the inside here and I press float, you might be able to see here, obviously, that you are getting a bit more movement and I could slow it down even more if I wanted to. So let me slow it down all the way. And you can see here now we're just 
barely moving from left to right and I'll move front to back here and you can see we're kind of just floating our way around the cockpit and of course you can make modifications so that you go around faster or slower based on whatever your preferences are. That's all for this week's video. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Be sure to give this video a like, and if you have not yet hit the subscription button, uh, click this little annotation below or the big red button next to my channel name. Be sure to tune in next week to one of my streams. I will leave all of that information on my Facebook page. Hop over there, check it out, and we will see you soon. Happy landings.